What we're about to do is go into a deep dive of virtual environments with Python projects. Now, not everybody needs to go through this because if you're a beginner, you don't need this granular detail. But if you have some familiarity and you want to know more about virtual environments, let's go ahead and do that in just a moment. If you don't want to learn about it, feel free to skip this and go to the next part because the next part will pick up where we left off anyway. So now we're going to be using a virtual environment. And I said before that it keeps all of your software versions in one place. But we're actually gonna install it using the three different methods of installing a virtual environment. And the reason for this has to do with, well, a couple things. Number one is on a lot of tutorials around the web, you'll see these different versions of virtual environments and you can totally use them. And then number two is you can see the pluses and minuses of each type of virtual environment because they have evolved over time. But the general idea is that when you create a Python project, whether it's Django or TensorFlow or Pandas or Flask or many of the other Python projects, um, you want to make sure that you keep everything in a virtual environment because of those version changes. I've been, I've been using virtual environments for like 10 plus years, so it's a really good idea to, to stick with that um, even if it feels like, ah, I'm not going to do it. Right, like I, I, I sort of feel that way sometimes, like ah, I don't wanna do it, but the version thing does make a, a big difference and it's super frustrating when you're working on a project and then you start a new project and then you get version co conflicts. That's, that's, that's definitely a, a, a really, really challenging and frustrating thing to go through. So I always make a virtual environment for each project that I work on. So you can always delete these virtual environments as well and then reactivate them later if you are coming back to a project. So let's go ahead and create a virtual environment. So the first thing I need to do is open up my terminal window and I need to make sure that I have the software installed for virtual environments. So I'm gonna do python3-m pip install pip dash dash upgrade. So what this is doing is upgrading the Python package installer. Now, when, when we think of a package installer, I want you to think actually in terms of like the app store. So on your phone, you have an app store and you're able to download all these different software versions and more than likely you're able to update them as well. Pip or PyPy, it's called PyPy, so PyPy.org. Oops. Uh, you can find all these different packages and actually use them in your projects. So pip allows you to just run, install, and then whatever the package name is, and then now you have whatever that package is inside of your Python environment or in your virtual environment. So I just install pip and upgrade pip to just make sure that I have the latest version of pip um, and that I can use that in my projects as well. The next thing is to use pip to install the different virtual environments that we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna be doing each one step by step. So we'll do python3-m and we'll do pip install venv. So venv is actually a built-in Python module for creating virtual environments. So what's happening here is python3-m is saying, hey, Python module, pip, or something else, do the commands that we need it to do. So I wanna use this venv module to create a virtual environment, our first basic virtual environment. And to do that, I'm actually gonna go into the desktop. So I'll go ahead and do cd desktop, and we wanna allow access to the desktop. So if I cd back into well, actually, let me just close this terminal window out or open a new one, like we were starting fresh, just like you would be. And I'll say yes. If I type out ls, this actually lists out everything that's in that directory. You can confirm this by just opening that directory up or that folder up by typing out open period. And what that does is open a finder window uh, to show you that exact folder setup right there. So CD allows us to navigate through our different directories. It stands for change directory and directory and folder are interchangeable. You probably think of them in terms of, of folders, but uh, technically speaking, they're, they're called directories. Uh, maybe technically speaking, they're called both things, but most machines call them directories. So we'll say CD into desktop. Inside of here, we're gonna make a new folder and I'll just say make their test, okay? 
So mkdir test means make directory test or of the name test. So now I can cd into test and now I can actually create a virtual environment in here. And this is a very common process. What I just did is I opened up a terminal window. I changed into the directory that I want my virtual environment to live and then, or more, more specifically my project to live. And then I make a directory for that project. And then I go into that project and then I can use that module. So Python three dash M. So Python three module V E M V. And then this is the virtual environment command to start a new virtual environment. And what I can do is actually just put a period here to make that virtual environment within the current folder that I'm at. If I don't have that, I can say something like ABC and then it will create a new folder called ABC with the virtual environment stuff there. So VEMV, just like that, it's gonna create that virtual environment and I can see that by listing everything out, okay? So with that listed out, I can run something like source bin slash activate and I now have a virtual environment activated. Now, without getting into too many of the details as to what these virtual environments do, I wanna show you something that's pretty cool. If I do pip freeze here, or more specifically, you can run Python 3-m pip freeze, this will show me nothing. You might see one or two things, but it shows me pretty much nothing is installed. That's what the pip freeze command does. It's saying, hey, what's installed in this environment or this Python environment? But if I open a new terminal window and run pip freeze, in my case, I still have nothing installed. If I want pip three freeze, still nothing, right? So what if I actually went and did pip install requests, okay? So I'm installing something called Python requests into my system. If I want pip freeze now, I see that I have multiple things installed here. But in my virtual environment, pip freeze, I have nothing installed still. And this is where virtual environments shine, right here. So as you might imagine that if you had several different projects with different versions of even just Python requests, you could isolate them from each other. And obviously pip freeze is showing us what's installed, but also the versions that are installed. And also notice that I only installed Python requests, but all of these other things came in with it. And that's because each project has its own dependencies or things that it depends on that are often other Python libraries. So that's what we see here. Now I wanna show you two more ways on how to make virtual environments. So let's go ahead and open up another terminal window. I'm gonna CD into my desktop again, and I'm gonna make a directory called test2. And then now what I'm gonna do is actually run Python 3 module pip install virtual env. This is one that I used to use all of the time. Virtual env is just another way to use a virtual environment. So now that I have that installed, if I do pip freeze, this is my system, right? My system's pip, it has virtual env installed now. Um, so I can actually use that, com that actual module. So there's two ways to use it. You could just type out virtual env or you can type out Python 3-m virtual env. Okay, so both of these things are valid ways to actually use virtual environments. And the reason it's showing you errors is because you need to find define a destination, as in where are you creating this virtual environment? So in my case, I'm still on the, the desktop. So if I cd into test two and now run virtual env, period, I will actually create a brand new virtual environment. But there's one challenge with this is that I need to actually declare the Python version. So I wanna say P Python three. But again, before I do that, if I do Python dash V and then Python three dash V and that's capital V, um, I'll, I'll see this, two, the, the two different versions here. By default, virtual env is gonna go off of whatever typing Python out will give you. So what I need to do then is virtual env dash p and python three and period. Uh, the ordering of, of these right here doesn't actually matter that much. And the dot period again makes it within the directory that I'm currently in, which is denoted up here. But also if you type out pwd, it'll show you what directory you're currently in. So I hit enter 
And now it's downloading and installing this. Notice that it's, it's using Python 3.8 here, right? So that's pretty cool. It's actually using the version of Python that we needed. So I can go ahead and do source bin slash activate and Python dash V. Notice that I don't have a three there now, but it's still using Python 3.6. That is also true with our other virtual environment. Don't worry if you uh, close that one out already. Uh, but the other thing about virtual environments is actually where they are stored or the Python executable stored, which I'll show you in just a moment. But we wanna do our last actual virtual environment type, which is the preferred one, and that's pip env. So yet again, I'm gonna do Python 3-m pip install pip env. So this is yet another way to manage virtual environments, and it's just called pip env, that's all. Um, another thing that you will see often is pip3 install, uh, and that's using Python 3's version of pip. You'll see that on different tutorials and all that throughout the web as well. It's the same, roughly the same thing. But now I have pip env, pip env installed, I can actually use it. So typing out that command will give me something like this. And, it, and again, if I type out the module pip env, um, without Python 3, I get this, Python 3-module pip env. Oops, let's type that again, Python 3-module, pip env. I see that same sort of command that we need to do. So let's go ahead and navigate into our desktop again. Let's make a directory called test3, cd into test3. And now we just use pip env install, and I wanna declare which Python version. So it's a little bit different than virtual env. We do dash dash Python and then the Python version I wanna use. In this case, it's Python 3 or Python 3.8. So if I hit enter with that, it actually will also create that virtual environment um, like we did before. So notice that it's creating using Python 3.8 as it shows right there, and more specifically 3.8.2. To activate this virtual environment, it's pip env shell. Okay, cool. So now that I've got this, I can again run pip freeze and I don't see anything here. But the major difference between pip env and these other kinds of virtual environments is that it actually creates something called a pip file. So if I open up this pip file and you can open it up in a text editor of any kind like text edit, I'm gonna open it up in something called VS Code, Visual Studio Code. Um, I'm gonna open it here just so that we have some sort of reference that's going on here. Um, no worries if you don't have any text editor or code editor installed, you can just watch and bear with me for just a moment. Um, so this pip file describes this virtual environment, right? If we look at our other virtual environments, we actually have files in here, uh, but nothing that's actually related to exactly how it's configured. So I can do cat pyvnv.config, this actually is giving me a Python version, which is cool, that's nice. Um, and then the, that's from, this one right here is from when we did VENV. This one is a virtual ENV, and this one is a pip ENV. Uh, but if we install stuff in each one of these, so pip install, let's say, uh, requests again. And then I take a look at, by using cat, cat actually reads that, that file. Uh, cat pyenv, it's still showing me just what the Python version is. It doesn't show me what's installed there. And that's absolutely true also with the virtual env. So pip install require, uh, requests. But pip env, on the other hand, if we do pip env install, instead of pip install, but rather pip env install requests, we now have the various ways on how you can actually install um, different versions that are related to pip env. And we also see that it says updated the pip file, right? So it added requests to the pip file and it updates the pip file dependencies as well as the pip file.lock. So that means that now in that same pip file, I have requests in there. It's actually sh showing me that that's the package that I just installed inside of Python requests. Um, whereas these other ones don't do that, right? They don't keep track of both what's installed as well as the version of Python that you're using. And that's why I tend to use pip env for the majority of my projects. 
I just have to remember it's not pip install this time now, it's pip env install. And I realized like this is a lot of things to remember. So every once in a while, if you actually accidentally do pip install, let's say for instance, you do pip install um, Django, uh, what's gonna happen is it's going to download and install Django, but it's not going to update our pip file at all, which is perfectly okay. In fact, all of these other environments, it's perfectly okay that we use these other environments. We just have to remember one more step. Yes, many, many steps, but um, we would do pip freeze and requirements.txt. This is a very common practice is to see requirements.txt for each virtual environment. So if you cat requirements.txt, you actually can see all of the things that are installed in each one of these virtual environments uh, as well. So that's, that's another way to just store what's in uh, pip freeze. And with this, we can actually do something called pip install r requirements.txt. Or in our pip env one, we can do pip env install r requirements.txt. And what that does is it imports all of those requirements now into the packages for that pip file. So, so we now know for sure these are the things that are in that environment that I definitely want to reproduce if I bring this anywhere else or if I bring it into production. But of course, the two things that I actually installed were Django and requests, and I didn't specify a version. I just installed them so I can do something like this, and that is still a valid pip file. These two projects or these two packages will install all of their other dependencies as they already did, right? So if you remember back, all I did was install Django and install requests. And so now in the future, if for some reason you lost this pip file, you can just do pip env install, and you know, it's gonna install everything from that pip file, regardless of what's actually listed and all that. So that's pretty cool. Um, now, the other part of this is that if I were to send you this project, I don't have any code in it right now, but notice that it only has three items in here. It has pip file and requirements, whereas my other items have a lot more things to it. It has a bin, lib, and include. Both of them have a bin, lib and include. And what that means is it's actually packaging all of this project in this directory. That means that, you know, like if you download a big Python package, it's going to be inside of this directory where the actual pip env is not. Now that might be a little confusing. So let's go ahead and just jump into Python real quick on both of these. And I'm just going to show you what I mean by that. So Python, so the virtual environments, the first two are roughly the same. So I'll go ahead and import sys, and then we're gonna print out sys.executable. And then the next one is we're gonna import sys, and then we're gonna print out sys.executable. Okay, so notice where these things are stored. Uh, this one is stored in a location I did not manually create. PipEMV created this location for me for this particular virtual environment. And then on this one, this is in the location that I did create and it's inside of my entire project. Now, in some cases, it might be good to keep all this stuff together, but most of the time, you don't want your environment related things stored in, let's say for instance, GitHub or on your live production server. Your live production server would reinstall everything based off of that system. It wouldn't do it based off of your system it would do it based off of whatever that production system is. So in this case, of course, I have another location for this. So pip -EMV is is better prepared so you don't accidentally send that entire bin folder. So what I mean by that is if we take a look at this virtual environment, I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here and just type out open to that directory or this path right here. I can actually see that I created this test three. This is the same virtual environment type files as what I have inside of this one, right? So if I open that, type out open, and then the path to it, they are they are very similar. They both have been include in lib, and Ben has all of these things. Ben has a, a few more of those things, and then include, right? It has a shortcut to Python 3.8. Both of them do. And then finally, lib shows me the packages that are installed 
in this virtual environment. So you go to Python 3.8, again, the virtual environment, lib, Python 3.8, or whatever Python version it is. You scroll down to site packages. This shows you literally all of the code for every site package or every package you've installed here. And that's true on every single virtual environment. You can look at these packages that are installed. Notice that Django's here, right? So this is where I could actually jump into the Django code itself and make changes if I wanted to, right? And so spacebar allows me to preview this and that's, that's actually showing me that content there. So again, this is, this is the reason that we don't wanna push this into a production server is that this starts to make conflicts with whatever codes on that production server and you wanna always install this with the machine that you're working on. A really, really good example of this is if I sent this entire project to you with all the virtual environment stuff to your Windows computer, it's not gonna work, right? It might even not work on your local Mac computer because you might have a bunch of different changes to your virtual environments. Um, so what you need to do then is just sending that pip file and only the project specific Python code, um, which is something that we definitely go into, or at least you see it in action when we bring a project uh, into production. So that's it on this one. This is definitely an in-depth dive of these different virtual environments. Um, and I think it's important to see them. But one of the things that we didn't cover, which I still will, is actually changing the version of Python for these different virtual environments, which we're gonna do later. But I wanna do a much more deep dive for those of you who are looking for those details in this one.